So I'm going to show you the inner life of the cell. You may have seen it before. It's not a very new animation. What I love about this animation so much is not just that it was done by Harvard, um, but that what we're going to be looking at are a bunch of proteins along with some messenger RNA and ribosomes that are depicted entirely accurately. In other words, this three-dimensional world that we're looking at, like just look at this little fellow right here. Do you see those? That's like his arms holding on to something and there's his body and here are his feet down here. We're gonna see him in this animation walking along this uh, uh, cytoskeletal element and he's carrying this enormous membrane bound bag filled with other molecules. Um, this is not just someone's dream. This is not someone like, oh, if I invented a protein, this is actually scientifically accurate. So let's look at this. At the beginning of this animation, like I said, it was done by Harvard and it's really wonderfully done. Um, I hope it loads. Then what we're gonna see at the beginning, we're going to be seeing cells, okay? Um, and very quickly, we'll go from seeing cells to looking at molecules, right? Now the story starts with cells going through your bloodstream. And if we look here, uh, the cells that are depicted here as kind of a tan color, those are flat cells called endothelial cells that make up the structure of the tubes that are your blood vessels. And zipping through here, we see red blood cells that are red and they move really fast. And then we see white blood cells that are depicted here as blue and they kind of tumble along the inner surface. Why are they tumbling like that? Proteins, right? So here we see all of that. Now, we've just zoomed in closer. So now this we are looking at, this is the surface. This is the surface of the white blood cell as it's tumbling around. And that's the surface of the cell that makes up the structure of the white blood, the structure of the blood vessel. And if you look real closely here, and they showed it to us, these guys right here, these are proteins that are interacting on the surface of those two cells. When you see the longer animation, and I hope you go look for it, this is the story of how would the body tell white blood cells that are zipping by that there's a bacterial infection inside and that they need to leave the blood where they're just running around and go and fight those bacteria. So it starts right here with this interaction between proteins. Now we're going to look at the surface of the cell. Ooh, here we go. Do you remember talking about the phospholipid bilayer? This is looking at the outside of the cell membrane. The outside of the cell membrane, all of these little uh, floaty ball kind of things, those are the hydrophilic heads of phospholipid molecules. And we're going to see over here in the background, there are proteins that are sticking up out of the cell. And coming up here on our right, I'm kind of hiding it, is a raft in this fluid cell membrane, and you can see proteins. I don't know the names of those proteins, but those are actual proteins. They're not just an invention. Now in a second, we're going to go, oh, do you see how they move? Proteins are like that. When proteins do their job, proteins move. Let's see it happen again. Here we see them locking with each other just like some kind of, I don't know, dinosaur or some kind of a machine, right? Now we're down inside of the cell and here we have cytoskeleton. And yet to me, the cytoskeleton is not super exciting most of the time. Uh, all of these are proteins. We're looking at the cytoskeleton again. The cytoskeleton, not super exciting. It's not that much like a machine. This, this is all cytoskeleton made out of many, many, many individual proteins, like that's an individual protein and that's an individual protein. And they're put together to make huge structures that depicts the quaternary structure of these particular proteins. And they build themselves when they look, look, they're just building themselves. Like, I think we should put a walkway here. 
And then in a little bit, you'll see, oh, no one's walking on that walkway anymore. So this guy's going to say, hey, we're done with you. Would you please dismantle yourself? And it dismantles. This is a different kind of a walkway. Do you see how it's building itself? Those things, those things that are building themselves and unbuilding themselves, they're doing things, but we don't consider them to be alive. They are just proteins. But even though they're just proteins, the movements that they do allow our cells to be alive and our cells being alive allow us to be alive. Now, one of those tubes that's got made is right here on the lower uh, end of the screen. And here's that little fella that I told you about who's walking along um, this walkway and his name is Dining. That's, that's, he's got a name. And he's carrying this big blue balloon. Why? Do you remember that there were some things that were special proteins that were made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum? And I told you that those things get taken to the Golgi apparatus for packing and shipping and then from the Golgi apparatus to the surface of the cell. We're going to watch that happen here. Now, how do they get from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus? We're going to be watching that. Uh, the short story is a balloon like this is filled with those proteins and this fellow is picking them up from one place and dropping it off somewhere else like the mailman. Do you see this guy in the background? He's another one going in a different direction. Now you can see him walking along the surface and that movement is actually the way these particular proteins move and walk along the length of the cytoskeleton. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, darn it, hold on, let me move myself. This guy in the upper right-hand corner here, this guy in the upper right-hand corner, that is a mitochondrion. Mitochondria are the, uh, let's go back and look at him again. Mitochondria are descendants of ancient bacteria. And so you can see that that ancient, descendant of ancient bacteria, he's moving around inside of your cells um, by using the cytoskeleton. Ooh. Now, we just finished talking about this stuff. This is the surface of the nucleus. Down inside of there, that's where your DNA is. Transcription has happened. And when transcription happened, messenger RNA got made. And messenger RNA is being shot out of those holes. And that messenger RNA means that that's what the protein that the nucleus wants the ribosomes to make. Now, we're going to watch the ribosome attach to the messenger RNA. There's one part that now we've got ourselves a ribosome. And you see the ribosome is slight. This is all messenger RNA, G's and A's and U's and C's. This thing in green, that is a ribosome. And he is sliding along all of those codons. And as he does, this thing that's kind of yellowish is coming off the side. And that is the protein that this ribosome is making. So here you go ribosome attaching to the messenger RNA. Now we're going to zoom in real close and look, he's making a protein and the protein makes a shape as it goes. Some of those proteins will get sent over to the mitochondrion, but some of those proteins are made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here is a ribosome who started making a protein and then realized, oh, this is one of the proteins that's going to be exported from the cell. So I need to attach myself to the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And here he's going to finish making that protein and put it into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, uh, this is, we're too far away to see individual ribosomes now, but this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum is covered with ribosomes. And these are little packages of proteins that have been made by those ribosomes in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And they are going to be little balloon packages of ribosomes, and they need to be taken over to the Golgi apparatus for packing and shipping. So how do they get to the Golgi apparatus? Well, here is dynein who's going to walk them over there. So you can see lots of dyneins walking, lots of packages here to the Golgi apparatus. Packing and shipping happens, and then there will be more dyneins that are carrying packages 
of proteins away from the Golgi apparatus towards the surface of the cell. So here he's going to the surface of the cell, and now these proteins, some of them are gonna be thrown out into the atmosphere. Some of them, some of these proteins are going to become a part of the cell membrane. All of these are parts of the cell membrane. These are all proteins, and these are proteins that are meant to say, the next time a white blood cell goes by, would you ask him to stop and please come in here and fix the bacterial infection that's going on. So here they're going to reach up and like the next white blood cell that comes by, they're going to try to grab it. So here they reach up and as they reach up, they're going to try and grab, here's the white blood cell. And what you don't see here, but what is happening is those proteins that reached up, they're grabbing onto this guy to say, hey, please stop. We need you to come in here and come fight these bacteria that are trying to cause an infection. White blood cell goes all flat and slides on through those cells and goes and fights bacteria and keeps you from getting a bacterial infection. Okay. Now, this particular animation uh, by Howard Hughes Medical Institute is available all over the internet. And uh, there are longer ones that actually have subtitles and tell you a lot of detail. So I hope you'll have a look at it.